All right, what up? So welcome to another video. So today we're gonna to be covering five different things that I commonly hear coaches, parents, and trainers say to players that are just simply not true. Now these are just myths that have been passed down from generation to generation because someone else just heard another coach, trainer, or parent say it sounded good, so they just repeat it. So we're gonna go through each one individually, break them down, and teach you guys why they're not necessarily true and why they don't translate to being a better basketball player. So make sure if you guys are a coach, and you guys hear one of these statements and you guys say them, actually listen and then try to learn so that way we can move the game forward, teach the right way. And if you guys are a player, make sure you guys watch out for coaches that say these kind of things and make sure that you're challenging your coach if you hear them say something like this. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So number five is the belief that you have to jump off and use a certain hand on a certain side of the rim. So I know there's still somehow somewhat coaches that believe you should be jumping off the left foot on the right side, and the right foot on the left side. And that you should only be using your right hand on the right side and you have to use your left hand on the left side. Now I understand where coaches come from when they teach players wrong foot, jump off the right foot or use the left hand. I get that because you wanna be able to teach them to do both. But teaching them that they can't use the right hand on the left side or telling them they're jumping off the wrong foot when they use the right foot on the right side is just utterly wrong, right? By teaching them this and giving them that mindset that I'm supposed to jump off the left foot on the right side just simply does not help them because when they get older middle school high school college whatever they're gonna have to be able to do all of it on the right side and the left side so you're gonna have to use your left hand on the right side sometimes you're gonna have to use your right foot on the right side so when you teach them that belief it's gonna be way harder for them to learn as they get older because again they have that belief that it's wrong so they're gonna fight it for so long until a coach finally tells them that it's okay I have players that come to me and I say jump off your right foot on the right side, use your right hand. They have so many issues with it because they've been taught for so long to just jump off their left foot. If the player is jumping off their right foot, just let them, but also make sure they can jump off that left foot. So don't necessarily correct them and tell them it's wrong, just make sure that they can do both. So if they're jumping off their right foot on the right side, that's perfectly fine. Don't criticize them for it, just also teach them to use their left foot. Because when you get older, you're gonna have to be able to do all of it, like I said. You're gonna have to be able to use the left foot, right hand, left foot, left hand, right foot, right hand, right? You got to do all of it. So just teaching a player that it's wrong and taking them away from doing that is just going to hurt them as they get older, make their development as a player that much harder and take that much longer. So point number four is always dribbling low. Now I know a lot of coaches, a lot of parents and some trainers say this a lot. Keep your dribbles low, make sure you're dribbling low. Now what's the real purpose to making sure they can dribble low? because honestly it doesn't really happen that often in a game. And yes, I understand that it does because splitting screens, perfect time to use it. Some low crossovers, right? Splitting through someone reaching in, right? It has its purpose, but teaching players to always just dribble low just so they can dribble faster does not translate to the game at all. How many great players have you seen drive to the rim, get to the rim quickly and efficiently doing that? Probably absolutely never. So just by teaching them to dribble low all the time, just because it looks good, they're dribbling faster does not mean that they are getting better, right? Most of the time when you guys see players in a game, that ball's coming up to their hip, right? They're up here, that's how they're gonna move. They're getting into their shot. They're dribbling waist high. Now, one of the main reasons for this is because it helps you get your dribble step and your motion step. So I'm dribbling on that inside foot, dribbling on that inside foot. I'm gonna be a lot quicker getting to the rim instead of dribbling every single step like I see some players do when they come and work with me. Sometimes younger players, I get them for the first time and they're like, oh, my coach always told me to dribble low. And I'm like, bro, it just does not help them. Dribble by your hip, right? I'm gonna be a lot quicker getting into my jump shot, a lot more efficient, getting to stops, right? Getting by people, especially on crossovers. I wanna be able to cross and then step, step, then dribble. But if I have the tendency to dribble low, I'm gonna dribble way too often, I'm gonna be slow getting out of crosses, slow getting to the rim, inefficient, changing direction, stopping, and getting into my shots. So yes, dribbling low has its purpose, but teach players to dribble by their hip, be able to change the height of the ball from low to high, because it's not always at the same spot, but it's rarely by your ankle. So just teaching players to dribble low so they can dribble faster really does not have that much of a place within training. So point number three is one dribble drives. 
Now I know a lot of parents, coaches, trainers love to say, rip, get downhill, one dribble, get to the rim. It sounds good, you can get there quote unquote faster, but in a game, it's not efficient. So teaching players to try to get there in one dribble all the time is not going to help them come game time. Now one obvious reason which you see a lot of players do, you rip here, you take one dribble, most of the time you're picking up right around the free throw line. I have two steps to the rim. It's pretty obvious what I'm gonna do unless I pass the ball. Makes it real easy for rotating help defender to slide over or the defender on my hip to time my steps up, right? Because I pick up, dribble, pick up, one, two, and then I'm up. They know when I'm going up, block my shot. There you go. So another one, you look at high level finishers. One thing that they're great at is cutting in front of that defender. So if I rip or I dribble by my defender's hip, that first dribble is gonna get me to their hip or by their hip. That second dribble is gonna allow me to get in front. So by taking one dribble, I'm keeping myself on that defender's hip. So I'm rip here, that second dribble get in front. I can make a play around the rim. I get in front of my defender, take him out of the play. But with that one dribble, I'm here, pick up, defenders on my hip, can easily push me out because I do not have a second dribble to have more options, right? I can't come to a stop. I can't change directions. I can't use a second dribble to bump, which are all very helpful when it comes to getting to the rim and being efficient, reducing turnovers, increasing efficiency. You look at some NBA players, they're taking three dribbles sometimes, getting to the rim. So don't think that you can't do it because you're too tall, you're too long. You just got to increase your ability to be efficient with your feet and with your dribbles. This is going to open up a lot of doors and a lot of options for you when getting to the rim. So don't think you have to get there in one dribble because it gets you there faster or it sounds better. Do what's efficient, what's gonna get the job done. So number two is keeping my eyes up at all times, right? Coaches love to say, you're balling eyes up the whole time. It's just not realistic. Go watch any basketball player. Go find me one person who always has their eyes up. You're not gonna find it. And there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, a lot of times if I'm trying to size up my defender one-on-one, -on -one, I wanna see what their feet are doing, right? So by looking to the rim, I have no idea where their foot positioning is. Right, so if I'm playing here, I want to kind of see where their, where their feet are. I want to stab at their feet, see what they do, and then play off of that. Also, just because my eyes are here doesn't mean I can't see what's going on along the floor. But the third point is my hezzy no longer becomes effective if I'm already looking at the rim. So if I want to get into a hezzy, what makes our hezzy efficient? Right, bringing that hand to the ball and bringing those eyes up because that's what we do on our jump shot. But if our eyes are already at the rim, those no longer become a weapon. Right? Also, if I'm looking up at the rim, I can't sell a pass fake like I would if I'm here and then pass there. Right? So my eyes no longer become a weapon the second I glue my eyes to the rim. And obviously the other thing coaches talk about is during ball handling, always keeping your eyes up. Now when I'm building my ball handling, let's focus on ball handling. So let's improve my ability to handle the basketball. If I can handle the basketball at an elite level, I'm naturally going to be comfortable with my eyes up because that ball has become an extension to my hand. So I'm super comfortable dribbling. So now it's easy to get me to look around, right? If I'm uncomfortable doing this, I'm just gonna keep losing the basketball. I'm not gonna be comfortable handling the ball. Second I get in the game, I'm done, right? So looking down during dribbling, during a game, it's completely fine. I can look around, then look to the rim, right? So always keeping your eyes up, does not transfer to games, doesn't really make sense. So don't necessarily worry about it as long as you guys can translate into games and work on being able to use your eyes at the right times in game situations. So point number one, and I'm guilty of this myself, goes out to the coaches, parents, trainers that just talk way too much, give way too much information, overcorrect, overcriticize, and just constantly overloading that player with information, right? It's really, really easy as a trainer to just, oh, you see a mistake, correct, 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 correct and just keep rattling away things that they're doing wrong and things that they need to get better. But a kid's not gonna learn like that. And if you overload that kid or player with information, they're not gonna be able to take it all in. So it's only going to do them a disservice because now they're number one thinking too much. They're trying to correct too many different things at the same time. So they're all over the place in their head, right? Being able to also allow a player to make a mistake and try to correct on their own is gonna be more efficient when it comes to learning. They're gonna be able to learn that a lot better than if you're just constantly every single rep giving them information or critiques so again just let those players make mistakes hold back sometimes when you want to say something i know i have to do this sometimes i get in a, a little rhythm where i just want to keep keep giving that player information and just keep correcting keep correcting it's doing that player a disservice so sometimes you just gotta 
bite your lip, not say anything, let the player mess up, they'll figure it out. And again, just give little critiques here and there, and that's what's gonna be efficient for that player to learn. So again, if you're a player, coach is doing this, sometimes you might just need to tell the coach, hey, let me figure it out, I got it. And if you're a coach or a parent or a trainer, just watch yourself when you're giving instructions, how you're giving feedback, that kind of thing. Right, it all translates to making those players better and that's what we're all after. Hopefully these tips help some of you guys change some of your guys' mind or just simple entertainment. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Appreciate you guys for watching. See you guys in the next one.